Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom. Nathan Drinker and I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As a reminder, we're on Anchor, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and every other podcast platform in between. If you're looking for us in the video format, you can find us at the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel uh, and in uh, parking lots and cars. We're in, we're in everything. Uh, Apple CarPlay should be supporting this soon. Drink, great to be back with you. We got a, we got a packed one today. Uh, yes, we do got a pack one, and I need to go holler at Apple CarPlay because they evidently they're not messing around with my car. But with that said, I do got plenty of other Apple products. Yes, we got a pack one. Um, I'm really uh, ecstatic about what we got to get into today. But before we do that, um, you know, when I'm on here with my brother from another mother, I got to ask you uh, how everything over there with you and yours. That's good, man. Slow but steady. We'll get there. How about you? Yeah, you know what they say, you know what I'm saying, what they say, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, all that good stuff. So we moving along today, Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, before you know it, the weekend will be here. But before I put everybody to sleep, you know what time it is. This is another day, another dollar. We ready to give the streets what they need. Um, we see what they don't, absolutely say what they want. You know what time it is. You better sit them dinner plates because it's time to eat. And I, I don't really care if you ate already. You're going to eat again. And last but not least, Let's talk some sports, baby. Jay, what we got today, man? Well, this is episode 36. We're going to talk about the NFC title game. We're going to discuss Tom Brady's retirement. And don't miss a can't-miss segment on Brian Flores and that mega lawsuit that he just filed. Um, But we begin with the AFC championship game, which saw the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24. In overtime, if you may, uh, if in case you forgot, well, about three weeks ago, the Bengals hadn't won a playoff game in upwards of 30 years, and now they're headed to their first Super Bowl since I believe it was 1988, 89, somewhere in there. Uh, Joe Burrow, 23 out of 38, 250 yards and two touchdowns with one pick. Joe Mixon, over 100 all-purpose yards. Uh, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, both with six catches. And then for the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, he did throw for three touchdowns. He was 26 to 39 for 275 yards. He did throw two picks. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, 17 catches combined. They both scored a touchdown. The Chiefs led this one 21 3 early, but we know how it turned out after that. The Bengals came back and won it, or did the Chiefs lose it? Drink, you tell me. Man, I. That's a good question, by the way. Very good question, Jay. Um, I, I look. I, I don't want. I don't want to take the credit away from the Chiefs. I mean, I don't want to take the credit away from the Bengals. I, 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 man, I don't know how they do it week in and week out, but they getting it done. Um, but I, the Chiefs lost it, man. Like, listen. Here's the crazy thing, right? So they they go up, you know, pretty much twenty one to three, right? And, and, I, and, you know, we was in the group chat and we was talking. It's funny. Ironically, we was giving – well, you was giving George a hard time and I was agreeing with the hard time because I'm like, George, what, you, you kidding me right now? And, um, and then he got the last laugh. But it's, it's very – I thought it was very ironic how this game played very similar to the first game. And how they went in, you know, up 11 at halftime. And it's like, oh, this game is so so similar to the first game. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, whatever. This for all the chips. And this is, you know what I'm saying, this is not going to go like the first game. And then it started going like the first game. What, what I want to say that was remarkable, Patrick Mahomes in that first half looked at like Patrick Mahomes, I thought. Um, he, he, he got the ball out of time. He found Travis Kelsey. He found Tyreek Hill. He found Miko Hartman. He found these guys. Um, it was he left. Uh, Jared McKinnon. I mean, everybody, it was just click. It was like, yo, this is what we seen against the Buffalo Bills. Cincinnati ain't got a chance. That was the first half. Unfortunately, in, in the game of football, you play two halves. And this game was a tale of two halves. Because I don't know who in the hell came out in the second half for Kansas City. That wasn't the same team in the first half. I felt like Patrick Mahomes was trying his best um, Lamar Jackson impression in the pocket in the second half. 
And he got to these points where he was just like spinning around and dips and do dungaroo. And maybe the Bengals front, you know, did some things that made him uncomfortable. But I was a little perplexed with like what was going on there. I, was, I, I don't know. So I don't want to take the credit from the Bengals. But I definitely thought the Chiefs lost this game because if the same team came out in the second half, they came out in the first half, I think this game go remarkably different. I think we got the blowout that I, I thought we was going to get. But instead, they stunk up to join in the second half. I don't know. Listen, you had 21 points in the first half. And you had 24 points after overtime. That's not it. That's absolutely not it. I don't know. What what happened? I, I want to see the halftime speech. I want to know what was said at halftime. Because, hey, with all this talk going around, I, I want to know was there some money getting thrown around for an L around here. Because um, that halftime was looking a little bit suspect. Let me let me find out Andy Reid got paid. Either way, um, I have to give credit to the Bengals. Um, listen, Joe Burrow, man, listen, I, I got to – Listen, I, I wasn't sold on Joe Burrow when he first got out of college. Wasn't as sold in the first year. I thought he had moments. Then he got hurt year two. And now this year, he going to play in the Super Bowl. Man, Cincinnati got them a home run. That mm, This is what happened when you nail it in the draft. When you nail your wide receiver, and, when you nail your quarterback and your wide receiver in the draft. This is what happened. Instead, you got teams like the New York Giants that take Daniel Jones and um, oh, what, what the kid named Sterling Shepard in the draft, and that's what you got. Um, this is what happens when you get it together. And, and the thing is this, right? Remember we, we talked about the um, – like in the preview, like we was like, hey, listen, the Bengals' run defense is um, close to pathetic. They should be able to run the ball. Um, and it seems like in the first half – Kansas City realized that, but in the second half, Cincinnati was like, eh, we'll go and, you know, get a V of A or somebody that got out, you know, from some sale or something, because evidently they just start stoning the run, and then, you know, here go Patrick Mahomes is out here making up stuff. I don't know, man. It was weird. And I was hearing rumors about, hey, I think it was Rick. I don't think it was Rick. I don't really believe in those conspiracies. But I did think it was kind of odd the way the Kansas City came out in the second half. But, you know, we had Joe Mixon ran the ball well. I think we both said, you know, with the fact that he ran 21 carries for 88 yards but then three receptions for 27 yards, I think we both said he had to be in the mix for Cincinnati to win. I think he was in the mix enough to allow Joe Burrow to find his three-headed monster out there. The three hundred three headed monster being, you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Ty Ty Boyd, on uh, Tyler Boyd, um, and and listen, I, I like what I, I got to give a shout out to Jamar Chase because a lot of star receivers don't like to do this. I thought he played his role well. He knew he was the star. He knew he touched them for two hundred yards the first time around, so he knew he was going to be the focal point. And I thought he played a decor decor um. Roll kind of well, and he let T. Higgins be the guy this time around. And I think that worked, worked very well for the Bengals. But not to beat a dead horse, because I know we, we're trying to move along. The, the Chiefs lost this game. I think Andy Reid, we, he got some explaining to do. Because I, I don't know, man. That that wasn't it. Um, And listen, Bengals only scored 27 points. So I'm not going to sit here and act like um, – you know, the Chiefs defense didn't show up. I thought they played well. Yeah, they, they broke a few times. But at the end of the day, you third-year quarterback Joe Burrow came here, got the city on his back, got him to a Super Bowl. Shouts out to him. You know, sh shouts out to the Bingo organization, man. They ain't the laughing stock no more. They got a chance to win their first Super Bowl. Um, and Ever. To, huh? Ever, yeah. Right, they got a chance to win their first Super Bowl ever. And, and shout, out, shout out to the product that we're getting in the playoffs this year. We're getting a very good product in the playoffs this year. I just have to say that. I mean, most of the games have been so watchable that I, I, I sometimes I get lost in the sauce and be wondering, like, what, who, when did the NFL die and come back to become this? Because we're getting some good product out here. Um, 
So with that said, you know, hey, the Bengals, they won the game, but I thought I think Kansas City lost, man. And I think rightfully so. I think it's gonna teach them to take things more seriously. And like I said, I don't know what happened in the second half, but the Chiefs lost it. Shout out to the Bengals. Congratulations. You know, looking forward to seeing them in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I hate to I hate to be the one to um you know, in these whole, did this team win it? Did this team lose it? I always like to give credit to the team that ended up coming out on top. But um, man, this is probably the one of the one of the occasions to where I'm. This is to me is all about the Kansas City Chiefs. Like anybody, anybody that knows football and has an objective mindset, and you're not a Bengals fan, or you're not a Chiefs hater, or you're not just some some loon out here picking teams based off uniform colors and all the rest of it. You had the chiefs in this game. You had the chiefs in this game. No disrespect right. to our, uh, to our hosts who had the bangles. I don't know what he was thinking. If you bet money on it though, you probably, if y'all tell you one thing, if you bet money on it, you probably cleaned up, but there was, there was no, there was no indication that, you know, especially me and you and, you know, having uh, our level of intellect, there's no reason we had the Bengals to come out on top of this game. No reason at all. Even with the Bengals winning uh, their regular season matchup, in any event, that had us even more confident that the Chiefs would come back and take care of business. And I tell you, like, I don't know. you. I, I mean, you can go back. You got receipts on this one in the chat. Right. 20, when it was 21-3, I said, this is over. I right. had no idea that fortunes would turn and the Chiefs, offense would just put the thing in park and just completely stop this thing this thing unraveled before halftime even got here the Bengals first three drives they had three points the Chiefs had three touchdowns that's about all you need to know any any semblance of that game could you know being somewhat on that you know level incredible how the Chiefs offense as the game progressed just was you know, powerless to do anything. And I really think, I really think the key sequence was late in the first half when P Ryan gets loose for that big yeah, screen that yeah. gets the Bengals on the board, mm -hmm. but the chiefs had time. And the thing about it is, okay, man, we just gave up a touchdown 21, 10. Okay. No worry. It's fine because we gonna get this ball right now. We can go down there and score. And then we're going to double dip. Cause we're going to get, uh, you know, for the first ball in the second half. So you still had to feel great. And the Chiefs on that uh, that drive coming out of um, uh, right after P. Ryan scores, they go right down the field, and then inexplicably, you have that just odd play at the end of the first half where it's five seconds on the clock. Mahomes drops back. It's got to be a quick play, guys. Right. And you don't have timeouts, and, and instead, he doesn't get the ball out quick, and then he commits. Then he throws the ball to Hill in the backfield, and he goes down in the backfield, and that's it. So. And really, you know, if you if you want to be simplistic about it, that was the difference. If the Chiefs get three points there, they win the game because they kicked the field goal to end regulation. So there, there was the points you needed. I, I, th I thought that was really, really a key sequence. Of course, of course, the way they played the second half, it, it was just uninspiring. And obviously, I think the Bengals did some really nice things on defense. I really thought the way they rushed Mahomes, it's almost like they didn't even rush him. They just refused to gather their rush lanes. You know, sometimes they would have these three-man rushes. You'd have Hendrickson on one side. You have Hubbard on the other side. And they, no matter where Patrick Mahomes, if Patrick Mahomes goes all the way to Hubbard's side and he's about on the sideline, it doesn't matter. Hendrickson's still waiting for him to come back. You know, so I thought that was I thought that was great what they were able to do. They dropped a lot of guys and clogged up the field and made it tough. Um, but the the flip side of that is like, okay, okay, Andy Reid and uh, Eric Bieniemy and every, and Patrick Mahomes, you un, you see what they're doing? Why did you not adjust to the adjustment? It's just it's it's mind boggling. Um, so I, I I really am a proponent that Kansas City Kansas City lost this game. Um, and then, and then on top of it all, you have the way the game the game gets into regula regulation or gets into overtime, and the Chiefs win the coin toss for a second straight week. So it's Mahomes' time. Drive down the field, and we can have the 
the overtime thought, rules are BS. You know, we can have that argument over and over. I thought the game was over. I thought it was going to be and over. Instead, and instead, you run three plays, you throw a pick, and then next thing you know, uh, Evan McPherson is uh, now, what, 11 for 11 or 12, something crazy. He still can't miss in the playoffs. And you got the Bengals in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, it's just remarkable. The, the, it, I think it's a great story for Cincinnati because I think after they beat the Raiders, I was like, well, that was real cool, but um, right. this is about to be a wrap. Right. And, I mean, they, they do they do deserve credit for um, just continuing to pull the upset. It's almost like it's similar to how I felt about Tennessee when Tennessee beat New England in Tom Brady's final season New England, and then they upset Baltimore in the divisional round, but they couldn't finish it. They couldn't beat Kansas City the week after in the championship game. Cincinnati didn't win all the way, and they wouldn't win away from winning it at all. Again, spoiler alert, I ain't picking them to beat the Rams. Uh, but, I mean, look, they, they've upset the apple cart continuously thus far. Um, you got you to uh, show them respect. I think the Rams, uh, the Rams got to be prepared for that. I think they will be. And, but also, you know, the other side of it is I think this, and this is completely, you could say well, this is completely irrelevant, but in some ways I think it is. It gives more admiration to, and we'll get into it a little bit later, but it gives more admiration to what the New England Patriots have been able to accomplish over the past two decades to win, you know, six Super Bowls in, you know, a two decade span and be as consistent and, and great as they were with Brady and Belichick at the helm. Um, the Chiefs, to me, when you look at what they've done lately in the past four years, one Super Bowl seems to be woefully short you know that you you came up short but i think it just proves how difficult it is right. to win over and over again and in that way it it makes in my opinion new england's success through the years all that more admirable yeah no no i agree i agree you think about this right and i think if j just to add on this before i get up out of here to your point that you said Remember this, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, you had Tyreek Hill, you had Patrick Mahomes, you had Travis Kelsey. Right. Not one, right. not two, not three. Right. Now not look where we at now. So, like right. you said, you got to respect the game, man. And that's why.